Well, hey friends, it is Amanda with Metal Modern Design coming to you live tonight. Um, back for a second live today. My first one was on essential stencil this morning. We created a super cute, sorry, I'm working on getting a tag off of the shelf, a super cute lemon themed tray. And I said to come back and join me later because we were going to create the super cutest shell spoon rest to go on our tray. And so that is exactly what we're gonna do. Hey, Charlotte, thanks for being here. Hey, as you guys hop on, say hello. Let me know that you're here. I think that I've got comments. I see Penny and Patricia. Okay, good. I won't worry with the secondary device right now. So let me show you just a couple of things that you can do with shells. Hey, Kay Norris. Okay, so this is just a big oyster shell that I have decoupaged just this pretty little, uh, mermaid kind of themed um, napkin onto, and then you just gild it with some gold. I just leave it natural on the back, and these sell really well in my shop, in, in my booth, in the shop. So here is a sample of one of the, um, one of the scallops with the flamingos with the gold trim. Super cute. Hello, you just watched the live from this morning. It was a good one, I liked it. I liked the project. I've still got it here. I'm gonna do a couple of little touch-ups and then we'll be good to go. And then these are just some oysters. Now, friends, I do have these over at Deep South Shelling. Um, I'm, I've been working for a hot minute on revamping that website and changing things up a bit. If you give me till the end of the week, I will probably have some bundles up that'll have the napkins and the various things if you wanna try these. Um, but just give me till the end of the week to get it all together. Um, I'll have the flamingos there because I don't, can you see, you can see my stack of flamingo. Um, I've got a couple different types of flamingo napkins and I've got a bunch of the mermaid napkins. And so super cute for beach decor. I love decoupaging the shells. And so here's something else I've been doing lately. And that's resonating with some more shells inside of there. And so I know a bunch of you are asking, asking for a resin class and that is coming for sure. It's going to be here in May, the first part of May. We'll be working on that. Hey, friends. So, okay. So let us see what we are going to do here. Now I've got a couple different options for a green. And this is essentially the same napkin, just in different sizes. But this is the one I was thinking I would use this morning because I want something green to go with all of our yellow on our three-tiered tray. And I'll show you the three-tiered tray in just a minute. But then I have this one that's just a little more elegant and I thought maybe, and this is what the back of it looks like, I thought maybe I would use one of these. We might do one of each and just see what we like better. And I'm hoping I'm gonna have the right amount of dry time because ordinarily I do these in parts and let them dry for a period of time and then uh, come back to them to do the other parts. So I might have to do a two part. Thank you for, for saying that you're glad I'm on again tonight. I'm, I'm glad I'm on again tonight too. It's been a, a hectic day. So I was a little worried. Now, this is one of the things I hate when you buy some napkins and I don't even know where I got these. I, clearly I ordered them online because there's no packaging on the back. Sometimes I get them at Tuesday morning or Party City or somewhere and I hate it when the image is only on one of the panels because ordinarily you can get four panels out of your project, which means you can get multiple projects and on some of them, uh, they jip you. And so these are, you have to separate them. These are only two ply napkins. And so let me angle you down and show you what I'm doing real quick. One of the things that takes the most time with these little projects, let me just pull these little scallops out of the way. One of the things that takes some of the most time with these little projects is separating the, um, the napkins sometimes. Sometimes it's easier, sometimes it's, it's a bear. I've seen folks say that they wet it and that sometimes help or they lick their finger and sometimes that's helped. I've tried everything and sometimes it's just a beast and there's just not a whole lot you can do. And I'm not gonna worry about this side too much because it's just white and that's not really gonna help me much. We're just gonna rip the back sheet off. And some of your napkins will be two ply, some will be three ply. 
You just gotta read and then you're just gonna separate down the plies. Separate it down to its thinnest component. And I'm just gonna cut out the part here. You guys, I sell these really well at craft fairs. I sell these really well in the booth. If you book on Etsy, a lot of people sell these really well on Etsy. And so this is an option. And now let's open this one up. Let's see what we're working with here. That's kind of a lovely classic design. Let's just separate him out. He's, I think he, is he three ply? He is three ply. So that's one level. Now let's get down to the second. It helps if you have fingernails with this. Okay, and so I've got two plies here, see? I've got two plies of the white. Well, if I can show you two plies of the white and then the color section up here. We're gonna toss our white. And then we're left with this. You can put this on wood. I think we uh, we all have some friends that do a lot of decoupaging. I do, I do a decent amount of decoupaging. It's a really quick way to create something that looks just gorgeous. And a lot of times it looks like it's been hand painted when in fact it's it's just decoupaged. And so let me pull out an oyster shell, or not, I'm sorry, a scallop. This is gonna be a scallop. And I'm just gonna see kind of how this is gonna get arranged. Okay, so there's a, a few different types of Mod Podge, and I use Mod Podge for this. Um, you're doing, you're having trouble finding napkins, can I help? I've got some napkins that I will be listing at the end of the week in a bundle with the shells and stuff, but it'll be the end of the week before I do that. But I shop at Tuesday morning. I shop at Ross and TJ Maxx and Party City and Amazon, all the places. I'm always looking for napkins. And so, okay, so we've got a matte finish and we've got a gloss finish. I will tell you, I don't know if you can tell, I finished some of these in a matte and they were just very flat looking. And I went back and added a bit of gloss to them. And the gloss just really sets it off a good bit better. Here's the thing I will tell you. Let me lift you up for just a second and talk to you. So when it comes to finished products, the glossier the finish, the better protection it is. And so if you're refinishing furniture and you want something that has a matte finish because everybody loves that, that low luster matte finish, it's not nearly as protective on your piece as a high gloss finish. The, the gloss finishes just protect better. So when you're refinishing furniture, the thing that, that they'll tell you and that I always did and always advised is start with a gloss finish for the protection and then in subsequent coats, you can switch to a satin or a matte to dumb down that sheen. And so what makes it a bit more dull are more flattening agents. And with the more flattening agents, it just changes the makeup. And so this is with like polycrylic top coats. And so I will tell you, I would assume it's gonna be the same with a Mod Podge because it's pretty similar. And so I will, uh, I just, I like the gloss better, but sometimes all I can find is the matte. And the matte in certain pieces will have, um, will have a really good use. So let me angle you back down. Sorry, sometimes when I'm talking to you, uh, I feel like I do better when I see you. And so uh, I know that's funny because I don't really see you but I feel like it's hard to talk to people when you can't see their eyes. And so I just squeezed a little bit, and this is the matte that I'm using right now, the matte polycrylic. And I'm gonna grab a new brush and hope that I remember to get this washed because let me tell you, you need to have some dedicated brushes to your, um, to your Mod Podge because if they dry, you will never use them for anything again. Unless somebody in here's got some tips I haven't heard before. And so I'm just going to Paint this Mod Podge right onto this shell. No big, um, no big gulps or you know piles of it anywhere. It's just kind of, it's on there 
generously, but not, there's no like pooling of it anywhere. And so we're just going to press down. Let me see if I've got a tool that I want to use. I think I'll just use my fingers for now. Um, we're just going to press this down inside of our oyster shell. And sometimes you might have to work it a little bit, depending on your napkin. Sometimes your, your napkin might rip. Sometimes it just takes working it a little bit. You'll smooth out the wrinkles just ever so slightly. Okay. And when you're confident with that, then what I like to do is I just like to go ahead and do a little bit of a rip. Now, if it's not ripping easily, one of the things I will do is I go ahead and I put on a little bit of the top coat. And this is gonna be some Mod Podge in a gloss. Woo, that was a little bit much. It came out quick. It didn't come out and then it came out quick. So I'm just gonna scoop that into another shell. So we're just gonna smooth this on. Now it's gonna look white right now, but it's gonna dry clear. Okay, and so when you put this layer of Mod Podge on, a lot of times what will happen is that moisture will be all it really takes to loosen up the end of your napkin to rip it off. Now, something else you can do if that doesn't really float your boat is you can grab, I use these pens right here, the watercolor pens, may I help you? Okay, my daughters are going out to look at the sunset. She had to come in and tell me, pardon the interruption. I think there's supposed to be a pink moon tonight, a pink full moon. So we've got these watercolor pens and you can use these to wet the edge. This is all water-based, so it does actually work. If it's gorgeous, please take a picture. Are you going to the beach? Maybe, enjoy, sorry friends. My girls never go to the beach. I'm so jealous. So you guys know I must love you. Honestly, they didn't tell me they were doing this or I might've had to postpone my live. I hear them whispering. I don't know what they're doing off on the side. Okay. So it kind of lifted right there. I'm just gonna mush it back down. We're just applying that Mod Podge to the piece here. Silly girls. Okay. And then we're just going to let this dry. Honestly. I'm going to give it just a few minutes and then I'm going to come back with my, uh, my water pen and clean up those edges just a little bit. I'm super glad that my girls are doing something with each other. Emily came home from college on Friday and... Molly, of course, is the high school senior, so I'm glad they're going to do something together. Okay, so we've got that one. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab another oyster, and we're gonna use this one. And I'm gonna use kind of like the inconsistency of this one. So we're just gonna cut it out. If it's got a rim, like this one's got like a gold trim around it, I don't like to use that part because it's a little bit random. So we're gonna do the same thing. We are going to paint on some Mod Podge. You guys, we live about, um, we're right in the middle of kind of a peninsula and the beach, the beach is about 10 or 15 minutes away, but only because that's how long it takes us to get out of our subdivision going 20 miles an hour. These new brushes, I have been struggling with new brushes lately. Their bristles fall out all the time. So there really is no better place to check out the sunset than, than over on the causeway, where all you're doing is looking out over the water 
you guys will have to tell me if you're going to catch the sunset or if the sun has already set where you're at or if you're going to go try to catch the, the pink moon. I'm going to move it up just a bit. There we go. And then I'm just positioning, positioning this. I'm going to come back in. I'm just mashing it down a little. It's a little different when you're doing this on shells. It takes just a little practice because of all the little nooks and crannies. And so I've just got it mushed down. Can you guys see? It's pretty gloomy there. Oh, it's been a lovely day here, really. Now I'm just using my shell as a palette here. Ooh, that's a long string of these. We don't want that. Okay, so again, I'm just going to use some gloss finish and we're just going to put that right over our napkin. I want that little chunk out of there. Do you guys ever forget what craft supplies you buy? I've been struggling to find gloss um, Mod Podge and so the last time I was out shopping with one of my girlfriends, I picked up a container of it. And I remember specifically saying to her, is this a good price? Like, I don't know if this is a good price. And she's like, you know, I think Mod Podge is pretty much the same price everywhere. So I think you're safe to get it. And so I get it home and it's a fairly large bottle. And I probably have it over in a different craft area. And two days later, I get a shipment from Amazon and I have ordered like a two gallon jug <laughs> of Mod Podge that I totally did not remember ordering. And so I've reached that point where I've got craft supplies on the way that I don't even remember ordering. Isn't that funny? I'm just gonna kind of cut it. I do like the organic look of just ripping it. And so Right now it's going to going to appear just a little bit faded because it's got the, um, the Mod Podge on it and the Mod Podge looks white right now. But as the Mod Podge dries, it's going to dry clear. Now you can do this with the smaller shells. If you've got shells from your vacation, you can do that. I've already got some Mod Podge inside of this little shell here, but I've got that goop, that goopy piece. So I'm going to grab a piece of napkin and just wipe that away and then let's just squirt a little more Mod Podge on it and we'll just do it while we're here. That little bottle must view towards the end because it's got some some chunks. My goodness. Okay. Now what do I want to do with this one? We've got a couple of green ones so how about if I just I'm going to come back here and grab one of these. I haven't used one of these yet. These are the pink flamingos. Pink napkins I just got in. And I want to kind of see one of these. I haven't opened these yet, so I'm excited to see. There are bristles in this. You guys just make sure you get some quality brushes. I thought these were decent. They were just you know, like 10 bucks at... Michael's or Hobby Lobby. Okay, and these are gonna be, I don't know what these are. Fruit fly. Sometimes I like to look and that way I know if I've reached all the flies. Okay, I've got two white layers here and I'm down to this bottom layer. And so I'm just going to cautiously pull it apart. Now you could, you could cut it down to size. You could leave, you know, the, the plies together except for the little piece that you need. But I'm just gonna go ahead and separate it. And then this is what we're dealing with. And so let us just, Cut. 
across here. And I don't like necessarily using, I'm gonna go to the center piece on these because I can use these narrow, narrower pieces on the, um, on the oyster shells because they're more narrow. But sometimes you'll see these little edges that just have the little dots where the, the napkin's been put together. They're not a problem. You can use those just fine. I just, sometimes I'm snobby about it. Okay, so let's just smooth this out with a dry finger. Position it up a bit. And I am just gonna make a little cut right around it because I would like to save this if I can. Because we can do, with one napkin, we can do a lot of projects, a lot of projects. And so, smooth out our air bubbles. We're going to, we're going to add some gloss Mod Podge right to it. This one ought to be darling. It's a pink napkin with white flamingos. Okay, don't wanna overwork it too much, so we're just gonna step away from the paintbrush and I'm gonna just pull this off the sides and trim that up a little bit just by hand, pulling off that excess. Now, here's what I will typically do. I will come back with my little water marker. I'm gonna angle you guys up just a little bit so I can see comments. You're from the South Shore. Oh, thank you. Thank you for saying. We must have a new person. If you are here and you are new, welcome to our group. I don't always miss comments. Um, sometimes I can see them. I've just got you angled down right now so you can see the project and not me. If I miss comments or questions, I always go back and answer. Well, that's not what I intended. We're just gonna get a little of this water on here. And I'm just pulling that edge away ever so slightly. Now, sometimes I'll leave a gap where I can still see some shell. Really what I want is just not to have that shell looped or the, the napkin looped over the shell. So I'm just pulling it off. Adding a little bit of water sometimes makes it easy. So I'm just gonna add a little bit right up here. Just to moisten it. And then I'm just gonna kinda use my fingernail to help scrape it away. And I'm just gonna scrape it away up top because I wanna be able to add a little gold gilding and I don't wanna go over that napkin right there. And so I'm just scraping it away with my fingernail. Okay, we're gonna let that dry. We're gonna clean this one up just a little bit. Actually, just using some more Mod Podge often gives it enough moisture. How many of you uh, decoupage napkins in your crafts routinely? Do you have to seal these with anything? The Mod Podge is actually a sealer. And so it doubles as a glue and a sealer, which is awesome. Okay, this, ooh, I ripped off a little more than I wanted to, but that's okay because we will just fill that in with some gold. Okay, so we've got a couple of green ones here. We've got our pink one. And again, I'm just gonna go around that edge with this Mod Podge. Just gonna scrape away that excess with my fingernail. Okay. I 
I know it seems tedious, friends. It's a really easy process, and it's something that um, that just looks high end when you finish. So, if you can just deal with the the inconvenience of the the little, you know, dealing with the adhesive and scraping it away and all the things, it ends up being a super cute project. Okay. And so we've got these. We're gonna set these all aside for just a couple minutes and let them dry. I'll hit them with the heater though. I will tell you it doesn't like to be hit with the heater very well. So um, that's not how I prefer for them to dry. I prefer for them to dry naturally. Okay, so let me show you what these are going on so that you can get kind of an idea. So, we worked on this tiered tray when I was on the Essential Stencil page this morning. Okay, and we had this cute little tea tray or tea um, teapot, and then we created this super cute sweet tea sign and this super cute lemons, fresh lemons for five cents sign. If you want to see how these were created, just go back and catch the replay. And then I'm using just one of those Easter egg florals from the Dollar Tree for a pop of yellow. I also painted just one of these little rounds and added just a little bit of the black stain for just another little pop of color. And so you can organize this. Again, I'm organizing it backwards, but I showed them how to do this as well. And I got a little bit of that black on my yellow buttons. And so I really didn't want that on those. And so I said, all I was gonna do was come back and touch those up. And so while we're waiting on these shells to dry, we'll just touch those up just a little bit and grab, let me grab just a small brush here. Pardon me for reaching friends if, you, if I'm all up in your space. Okay. I'm just gonna dip in with just a little craft brush and I'm just gonna put some more of that yellow back on. It just got a little darker than I wanted, but we were kinda out of time on essential stencils. So I just wanted to touch these up ever so slightly. And this little decoupage shell is gonna go right on our, um, right on our piece here and it can double as a spoon rest you can actually, these work great as salt cellars, like you can put salt in them. A lot of people do that when they're doing catering events. These are great wedding, wedding favors. Okay, now they've just got a little bit of the black and let me just touch this one up just a little bit more and I like it better. So if, if these float your boat and you wanna see how these were created, then you can hop over to uh, that live. It's on Essential Stencil and on my page. It's in both places. Okay, so that was super quick. Now, a couple of you had suggested that maybe I might should add a, a bow on here. So just real quick, again, while we're waiting for these to dry just a little bit, and I am gonna wrap this brush in a wet wipe. So that maybe I don't ruin it because the Mod Podge is quick about ruining some, uh, some brushes. So a lot of folks said that they wanted to see uh, a bow on here. And so I will show you, you guys know I'm not the world's grandest bow maker. I just, it's just not one of my fortes, but I do have a super cute bow that I started making not all that long ago. And so this one, we're just gonna make him kind of small. Let's see how, how big I want him. We'll make him about four inches. So I'm just gonna cut my burlap. I like to use burlap on the back. This is a wired uh, ribbon and it's, it's kind of thick. And it's just gonna give my piece a little bit of um, substance. And so then I'm just gonna grab my multi-packer ribbon here which I picked up at TJ Maxx, I think at Christmas. And I'm just gonna cut some pieces at four inches as well. So we've got that color. We're 
going to do a piece of black at four inches. Doesn't have to be exact. And then this little black and white one. Okay, set aside my ribbon over here. And I'm just going to layer these here. Maybe I'll do this one and then this one. And then I'm just gonna, I'm just crisscrossing them slightly. Just a little bit of a crisscross. And then we're going to take a piece of, let me cut this. I'm gonna take a piece of uh, raffia and I'm gonna gather it. And I'm just gonna tie it. I'm going to pull it tight. I'm going to crisscross it. I know you guys didn't sign up for a bow tutorial tonight, but we were going to finish this, uh, this lemon piece, and this is part of it. So we'll just consider this a bonus tutorial, friends. Okay. And so we've got it tied a couple of good times there. Now I'm going to... Just gonna bend these edges just ever so slightly. And we're just gonna trim these up just, just a little. See, this is what happens when you use your scissors as um, mallets and <laughs> things to pry open your cans. Then they don't, they're not as, as uh, sharp as you need them to be when you're doing your project. And so that's okay. I'm just cutting them, folding them, and cutting them in just a tiny little V, just to give them a little, a little shape. Really, I'm wasting some time, so our, no, I did that wrong. <laughs> so our, um, our shells have some time to dry. See, it's just kind of fraying them because, um, well, friends, my scissors are super dull because I use them for many things other than cutting, which I should not. Okay, we're just going to fold this. Did you guys see how easy that little bow was? Just super easy. Let me clean up that, that frayed mess around here. And so now we just have a super cute little bow, just a little, a little bow that we could put right at the top. Now, I'm gonna trim back this raffia. Because we can do him, we can just put him down right there. We could even put a little button on him. Can you guys see that? Or we could grab some of this raffia right here. My goodness, I'm just gonna cut this, it's a hot mess. And I'm just gonna put this kind of together. Now I saw Brooke Riley do this one time and I said, you know what, that's a bow I can do and I'm just going to, I just need it to be small. So I'm just gonna fold it kind of about like this. I can always trim it and I'm just folding it back and forth, friends, just back and forth. And I don't really need it to be much longer than that, much larger than that. So maybe I'll wrap it one more time. Okay, I'm gonna end it right there. I'm gonna take a piece of it here, and we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put it down, and I'm just gonna tie this in the center. And this is just with some raffia, just folded kind of back and forth, back and forth. Slide this to the center, tie it a couple times. And then what we're gonna do Throw our excess raffia off to the side. And this can be a little bit messy too, but we're gonna trim the edges. And we're gonna come back and we're gonna cut all of those loops where we've folded it, okay? We're just gonna stick our scissors in and we're just going to cut these loops. And then I'm just gonna kind of trim them. 
creating just a little mess here and that's okay. Okay. And then we just have this simple, the simplest little bow. And so we can use our little black and white bow, which I think is darling, so it's probably the one we'll use. Or we can just add a little raffia bow. And you can make your little raffia bow bigger or smaller. You can trim it up, like this little piece needs to be trimmed up here. And then we can just E6000 or hot glue. You can even make a little smaller raffia bow and put it right on top of your ribbon. But that's how you do the little raffia bow. And just my little, my little quick bow. I really think Brooke Riley is the one that, that does that. So my hot glue gun is still dead because no, I have not charged my battery. But what I will do is take this E6000. What do you guys think? You like the black and white one better? I do too, so we're just gonna go with it. I'm just gonna put a little E6000. Just kind of offset just ever so slightly. And I might need to go back up and trim those edges just a little, which I can do. Okay, and so now we just have I need to put him down and let him dry. We put him down and let him dry. Okay, and we lay him flat. Set that little thing of paint on top of him to give him a little pressure. Okay, so let's grab out. These aren't quite dry, and I think if I hit them with the dryer, it's gonna bubble up, but let's just try it. Dry time is your friend with decoupage. So they're not quite dry, but they're dry enough for me to show you the next step. So what I do after this is I grab, this is my favorite gold. It's the Deco Art Americana Decor Metallics. And this is my favorite color. color. It's just a soft, subtle gold. And the color is soft gold which makes sense. I've got a few of these, but this is this is my favorite. And so I'm just gonna open it up. I shook it and stirred it earlier. I'm just gonna grab kind of a stiff brush and I'm just gonna come on here and grab away that excess right there. You'll wanna wait until yours are dry. But you're just gonna take this gold. Now, if you have a gold paint pen, you could probably use that. If you have a gold that you like, you could use it. This is just what I use. And I'm just gonna paint kind of right on the top of my napkin, just a little edging. You don't have to do this part at all. It just gives it a little something extra. In the shop, when I bring these in, people are always asking if they're hand painted. And because I've done this, I'm like, heck yeah, they are. Heck yeah, they're hand painted. I hand painted that cold stripe. Okay, friends, so it just takes a little time. I put it on kind of thick. And I just go around and around, all the way around the edge. So 
So if you've got shells from your beach collection or you wanna get some of these from me, you can certainly do that. Like I said, I'll put these bundles up over on Deep South Shelling um, at the end of the week. I'll get them up there by the end of the week. I've gotta get the mermaids and all the things up there as well. Take it up to the top. I'm going to put a little bit thicker gold up here. Go right across the top up here. Sometimes you might have to do a couple of coats, particularly up here at the top where it's a little bit thicker. But I just kind of wait and see what that ends up looking like. I've got a little of that napkin looped over the top and I don't want that I want it to end right there. And so then just that easy, we've created just something that looks ultra cute, ultra elegant. Once it's dry, it's going to be gorgeous. And so these are just a couple of the, like the oysters that I've done. And this is what they look like once they're dry. Aren't they darling? So super easy, just a little time consuming, that's all. Takes a little more patience than, than some things just because it's, it's so delicate, like getting in here and just putting this edging on just takes a few minutes. Now friends, I told y'all when I'm live, I want to draw some names to put in a bucket so that I can draw winners. So that I can just send out just a little art kit thank you. And I think the last couple times I've been live, I've totally, on my page, I've totally forgotten to do it. Essential Stencil does it for me when I'm live over on their page, but when I'm live on my own page, sometimes I forget. I'm so sorry. But what I do is I go back after the live, if I've done that, and I just randomly throw some names into the bucket. And so we will choose a winner on the 30th, a couple of winners, on the 30th to get some art kits. And so, let's see. And it, they're just random things. It just depends on what I have on hand. It's just something small, just a thank you for being here. It's nothing gigantic, though maybe I'll start making them gigantic, we'll see. I just appreciate you guys being here and sharing your love of crafting with me, stenciling and beach crafts and all the things. I might have to come back and do just a second coat up at this top area, but we've just looped that gold right around and it's just super pretty. And so once this dries, I will probably put a second coat of Mod Podge on it just so it's ultra secure. I'll use the gloss and then um, and I'm gonna wait for this one to dry just a touch more. And then it'll be ready to go once it's completely dry and you can use these as spoon rests on your tray. And it's a way to incorporate just a touch of the beach with your everyday decor. And I don't know about you guys, but I love having just a touch of the beach, particularly in the summer, but for me really it's year round because I live down here at the beach. So let me, let me set down all my things, cover up my Mod Podge here and angle you guys up and see if you have any questions. That's just one way to use some of the lovely uh, oyster and scallop shells. You forgot the pink moon. Yep, that's what my girls went out to watch. And so it looks like it's pretty dark now, but they probably drove down to the beach to see it. So I'm a little jealous, I forgot. Um, you saw the one earlier and wanted to see me finish it. It, uh, yes, and so all I did here is added just a little bow to this one and I probably need to trim him up a little bit because I trimmed him with dull scissors that are my um, my can opener and my my mallet. <laughs> so here we go. You guys, I loved the way this one turned out. This is a yellow for the lemon, the sweet tea, super cute. 
just just a cute little just a cute little set you can't see I've got it set down here just a cute little set that can be finished out just with our just with our little spoon rests here there we go isn't that just darling I think it's just darling and we can go with the brighter green for the spoon rest or we can go with something a little more subtle just depends on the look we're going for. We've got our other sign back here. And so, friends, I think that it's just a super cute little set. It's something you could do for a Mother's Day gift. It's something you could do. It's supposed to peak at 1130, my goodness. I don't know if I'll be up that late. I'm old. I'm drinking coffee just to make it through this live. Does the Dollar Tree sell big shells? I don't know. I, th I feel like the Dollar Tree sells little bags of shells, but I've got the big shells. And I think that there's certain places you can find them. I always get them from my shell supplier, so I buy them in bulk. You love it. Let me go back and see if there's any comments. Where do I get the boards that have the sweet tea? I got those, I wanna say from Craft Deals, with a Z, Craft Deals. Can gold rub and buff be used? Yes. I would say yes. You don't live at the beach, but you love the lake. Yes, the pink moon, the gold touch. Okay, if I have missed, where would be a good place to order shells? Amazon? You could try Amazon. Um, they've got free shipping, of course. I will have some packages that will have the napkins and things together with them. And so, and if I've got Mod Podge, I might include that. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I might just let you get your own Mod Podge. I don't know what quay hog shells, quay hog, quay hog shells are, but probably. This would be a great ring holder. Yes, doing, I and that's what I use mine for. Like I have mine, I mean, I don't have a ring anymore because I know I'm single, but um, I have mine. I usually pop my earrings out at night. And so I've got one on my bed. I put my earrings in it. Um, I gave one to a friend for her birthday. She uses it as a spoon rest in her coffee bar. And so that's what she does. Okay, now let me grab my had some little cut up pieces. Here we go. My little cut up papers and we'll we'll grab three winners or three names tonight to go in the pot to be chosen. So we will choose the winners on the 30th. Uh, but we've got to have some names to go in there. So let's draw three names to go in there. And we're going to do Lori Meter. I see your name after I scrolled. And the way I choose, I don't, I don't do favorites, friends. I just um, stick it in a little container over here. I just scroll through, and who I see in the center is who's getting written down. Andrea. Again. And so we're just putting some names in. I'll do four names tonight because I missed the last one. Jackie Jackson. And again, what you guys are getting is an entry to possibly win the craft, the craft bucket on the 30th. And so let me scroll, scroll, scroll way back. And Kay Norris. Okay, you guys are all going into the bucket. And you'll have to join me on the 30th and we'll draw. Let me scroll down to the end. You guys, I appreciate you being here to check out this, this little decoupage project. It's so super easy. It's so super cute and high end. Look at this one that we, that we created with our little lighter green. This is the one we created with our darker green. 
just gonna do one more coat of Mod Podge and they will be all good to go. Now, usually when I do these, I'll do all of the Mod Podging and let them dry before I do the gold. So um, if you're doing them at home, make sure you do that. And that's key. And so friends, this is what they end up looking like. Super cute, right? Super cute. Okay, you guys be blessed. Take care, have a super fantastic night, and I will see you real soon. Bye now. They are perfect for Christmas time. Yes, they are.